Is when you say words, you have to think how are words put together, first of all, right? You first of all have a, like an alphabet, yeah? And then the alphabet builds the words, and then the words build a, a sentence. And then the sentence builds a paragraph, the paragraph will build a chapter, the chapter will build a book. Mm -hmm. And then you call the people who wrote the book an author. So they have the authority over you because they wrote the book. Now, when you're dealing with language, you're dealing with tones, and vibrations and frequency. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're put under a spell, it's under spellings, as in spelling words. This is why people will be confused because you say, you say words in English, you say God, Allah, heaven, hell, spirit, Jesus, Muhammad, all these words. But when you go back and research the words and say what language do they come from? Like you're reading the Bible in English, but it's translated or copied from God's language. Mm -hmm. So you're like, what's God's language then? Because English didn't exist up until 525 AD or, I mean, years ago. So it's like, so what did God speak? What was God's language? The Muslims will say the Quran, for example, and say Arabic. And you say, but Arabic is, and the Quran is only 1400 years old. The Christians, that New Testament will say Greek, but you're like, that's 2000 years old. The Old Testament or the people that follow the Torah will say Hebrew. You're like, that's only 4,400 years ago. But the planet's been here for millions of years and you've had different cultures like the, 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 um, the Aztecs, the Zoo Aztecs, the Mayans, the Hindus, the Chinese, the Egyptians, the Sumerian, who all predate the Bible. Mm -hmm. So what language did they speak? So what it is, like I said at the beginning, you go back to the original language, which is our language known as Nuwapik or Miss Batia, which then clears up the spell because you might have a word like, for example, God. Uh, in the Bible, it says in the beginning, God, the first time you hear that word in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. But then when you go into the Hebrew, it doesn't say God. It mm -hmm. says Elohim, which is a plural, meaning more than one, because the, if you know Hebrew, you have a Yod and a Mim at the end of the word. Yeah. So Elo will be uh, singular, singular and then the, the I am or Im or which is the Yod and the Mim, will be Elohim, which is plural. So that's like in English, you put G-O-D for God, and then when you add an S to the end of it, it changes it from single to plural. So that's why when people are reading the Bible, they're confused, because it says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And you're like, who's the us? Mm -hmm. Who's the our? Because if there's one person speaking, they would say, let me make God in my image and in my likeness. I don't know if I'm going over your head. No, no, this is, I'm like, taking it in. Yeah, so I'm saying it's like the spells are casted through the words and the spellings. And this is why you have to go back to the tones that our culture, where we, we actually explain things properly. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, you're like, oh, Elohim, this is more than one. And then you go to other cultures, it would be like the Neteru, in, you know, Egypt, or, you know what I mean, the Anutu, or, you know what I mean, depending on which culture you're going to, you start to see these beings that are basically more than one and they're working together and they're all coming down here and doing certain things. Anunnaki, for example. Again, Anunnaki is, um, if you break the word down, Anu, who is the most high of the Sumerian doctrine, who had two sons, Enlil and Enki, and you're saying Anunnaki, the planet, the planet Earth was called Ki at one point. This is where you get G or Geo or geometry and all that comes from the word Ki, yeah? So what you're saying is Anu sent beings in groups of 50, that's what Na is, to the planet Ki, and they came here. You see what I mean? But people just go Anunnaki, but like, okay, what does Anunnaki mean? And then you can't, you get confused unless you can break the word down in the language, you see? So um, Anu was a god or gods? Yeah, he's a god of the Sumerian doctrine. Mm. They, they, in the Bible, he's referred to as the Most High. Yeah. But the thing about that, now check this out, <laughs> levels, yeah? For him to say he's the Most High, yeah. even that should make someone think, like, okay, how do you measure high or low? Mm. Because if you're the Most High, like, for example, if I had two things, one has to be short or taller for you to be able to go the Most High. So the question should be, the most high of what? 
And then in the Bible, because they translate that now, they say, have no other gods but me. Yeah? And in Islam, they say, la ilaha illa Allah, which is also, there's only one God but Allah. Now you're saying, if there's only one and you're saying, have no others but me, mm. doesn't make sense. Because how can I have any others if there's no others to have or exist? So what, by saying that, they're actually telling you that, that there's more than one what you're calling God. So Anunnaki or Anu was just a being that was ruling at that time. And other beings ruled at different times. Just like in America or in the UK, you'll have like a prime minister, which is a seat. Yeah. But different people can hold that seat. Like president. You know, you've had like Obama. Now you've got um, Biden. You had Trump. You had, you know what I mean? Different people. It's the same thing with that title. The Most High was held by different people at different times. So there were different Anus. You know, oh, right, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also known as the Sky Father? Or is that well, that's one of his sons, because the two sons, you had Enlil and Enki, mm -hmm. and um, Enki was father of the, of the key, or the planet Earth, yeah. and Enlil was father of the skies. But Anu was obviously in Nibiru, which is a planetoid craft, and so he was in the craft above them as well. So When you, when you say craft, what do you mean? Um, extraterrestrial crafts, yeah, like when I say craft, like we are used to aeroplanes, right, flying from one place to the other, but when you're flying or traveling intergalactically from one planet to another or through dimensions, you have to have different types of crafts to, to travel with. And it's not even that, it might sound weird to some people, yeah, yeah. but when you start reading the Bible and the Quran, mm -hmm. you see all throughout, like Ezekiel's will, they talk about the crystal city in the book of Revelation. Um, Daniel saw, you know, there's many, like the, the cloud that um, children of Israel. the children of Israel were throwing, were stopping and all of that. It's just that people didn't interpret it at that time as a craft. Do you see what I mean? But obviously we're living in a different day and time now with technology and m multiple sightings and people all around the world have confirmed even the United States government have recently done something called disclosure mm. to, to accept and admit that there's many crafts. Right. Even Hitler had crafts back in, in the day, <coughs> you see what I mean?